Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to The Tandy Writes. Today we're going to be talking about YA books, specifically height ones, that I've unexpectedly loved. So when it comes to height YA books, I usually kind of like run away from them, a little bit in fear, because I think they won't live up to the expectations that I've seen like all across like YouTube and Bookstagram and blogs and like everywhere. I'm the kind of person who's extremely cautious of overhyped books and they crave more smaller, maybe elusive titles. I mean, I want to read all the books and I read them eventually, it just takes me a while. I've read some height Y books that haven't been great, to be honest, but there's some that I'm like completely in love with and they own my heart. So here's a list of those books. Let's begin. The first book is actually a series and that's The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stavotta. This is a book that I got recommended to me by so many different people across many months, across like I got some on Instagram, I got recommendations on novellas, I saw blogs, I got recommendations on Goodreads and who else, I got some on YouTube and I ignored basically all the recommendations because I was just so overwhelmed, like so many people love it so I'm going to be like pressured to love it too and it won't live up to the expectation but I eventually gave in and now I'm in love with like every book in this series. I'm now under the impression that everything Maggie Stavolta writes is perfect and no other opinion matters, she can do no wrong. The next book is All the Bright Places and this is probably one of like the most incredible contemporaries, not just YA books but contemporaries, that I've ever read and I've never loved or hated a book so much because it was brilliant and it was heartbreaking and I kind of lost the ability to function as soon as I read the last page. And if you haven't read it already, it's a kind of about a mental illness and being a freak and not fitting in with the world and having a best friend. And it hurts. A lot. So another series is The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. And it's been so long that I barely remember what the books were about or why I love them. But I do remember loving them. And I also remember that I had the first book, I had left it unread on my shelf for months after starting or stopping it and yeah, restarting it dozens of times until I was finally hooked and then I fell in love with the series and then everything she wrote. So the series along with pretty much everything Sandra Clare writes is completely addicting and I'm in love with it. I throw around the word love very easily when it comes to books, just not people. So this is not a series but it is a duology but I'm going to fix on the first book which is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I still don't know how to say her last name. I did genu genuinely distrust this book at first because I heard it had like a lot of narrators and I read the first chapter and didn't really like it. And I kind of put the book down for literally months until I started college and a girl in my English class called Octavia told me she loved it and that I'd probably love it too. And I did. And she basically convinced me to finish it and then I borrowed Crooked Tin Kingdom of her and then the start of the Grisha trilogy. And you know, get friends who like the same books as you do. <laughs> so this trilogy is basically my life and Kaz, I'm pretty sure, is going to be one of my favourite characters of all time. So next up is Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda which is by Becky Albertalli? Be Becky someone. And this is a book that was just kind of so insanely adorable that I was just like grinning like an idiot through the entire thing. Simon, he hugs people and he jokes and he gets along with everyone and he's relatable. But he also overthinks and he's angsty and I love seeing these different sides in one character. Because usually their characters tend to be on one end of the spectrum or the other. And this is one that it kind of blends perfectly between the two options. And it's in the contemporary, not like any other book with many extreme situations where the character is forced to like ping pong between these ends. And those are my five main books, we're going to do a special mention because I think about this book pretty much every day and that's Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. I don't think John Green has a single book that wasn't or isn't hyped but this one holds like such a special place in my heart and it deserves every bit of the hype. Along with The Fault in Our Stars that deserves a lot of the hype. It's a love and hate letter to anxiety and it's all consumer spiral that comes with it and many other mental illnesses. This one seems to be focusing more, it seems to be more about OCD even though it doesn't specifically name OCD but the kind of situation that the characters are in can be related to like, any mental illness and that's why it sticks out to me so much. And I'm so d genuinely frustrated that there's so many people who like completely dismiss John Green's books like altogether 
just because of the hype because they're missing out on something so truly special in these very like beautiful and important stories. Anyway, I love Turtle and I love The Fighting Last Stars and I love pretentious teens who use big words and I love philosophy. That's it. So, in the comments below, why am I doing this? <laughs> so in the comments below, let me know some hyped books that you love. So like, do you avidly follow the hype or do you just like wait for reviews to come out and pick off them? So that are the books for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.